This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. So here's the thing, the older you get, the more health conscious you become, and you start to realize all the sugary cereal you used to like as a kid, this isn't that good for you. And that is where Magic Spoon comes into play. You get to try the cereal you used to like as a kid, but without any of the drawbacks. So it's keto friendly, it's soy free, it's grain free, it's wheat free, and it's gluten free. So if you have any dietary or health restrictions, you most likely would be able to eat the cereal. It's also high in protein. And most importantly, it tastes really good and there's different flavors. So you have Frosted, which is one of my favorites. There's Blueberry, which is probably my absolute favorite at the moment. You have Maple Waffle, which is probably the flavor that surprised you the most. I didn't think I would like it as much as I do. And for a limited time, they have cereal bars, which are fantastic. It's way better than I thought they were. You should definitely try these. If you want to try this for yourself, all you have to do is click the link down below and use my code LarryLair to get $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com forward slash LarryLair. How is it going, guys? What's up? So we have Charles and Zenyu debating Falco. So I'm sure many of you know, Zenyu has a very high opinion of Falco. Not only does Zenyu think that Falco is the best spacey, but he also thinks that Falco's top tier. And Charles does not think that, he doesn't think either of those things. He doesn't think Falco's top tier, nor does he think that Falco is the best spacey. So we're gonna start it off kind of like how he did the, the, the first thing I did. So we're gonna have Charles, say his piece on what he thinks about Falco, and then we'll have Zenyu do his, and I'll have myself muted so you guys can't hear me. Okay, so I'm, I'm Charles. I currently am a commentator, and I'm on Beast Coast as like a player manager, content manager, but previously I was a coach on TV, TSM, and then previously before that uh, I was a coach for Void, and then previously before that I competed in Brawl and Smash 4 as a player. So uh, here I am now, and... Uh, I, I definitely love talking about spaces. Spaces are my favorite archetype. Uh, I think they're actually pretty well balanced in this game. So yeah, I'm ready to get into it. Here's how I view the spaces. All right, so Wolf is like absurdly huge hitboxes. There's two spaces that have absurd mobility and Fox is on the ground. Actually, Fox has the most mobility overall, in my opinion, because he has ground mobility and he has vertical mobility. The A lot of Fox's pressure stems from his ability to fall to the ground extremely quick because he's the fastest faller in the game. And he gets to the apex of his uh, jump and double jump very quickly. So Fox creates a bunch of unreactable situations with, like, you have to respect falling there. Is he going to go for the grab? It's very bullshit. It's, like, very neutral, heavy, unreactable situations. You're almost rolling dice when Fox is fast falling on top of you every single time and he's able to get into those positions really quick he's a neutral glass cannon um kind of like chic where they their neutral is extremely strong but in other departments they're very weak so it's all about like trying to subside their neutral and you know go from there uh fox i believe gets better and better as players neutrals get better as we see light has been on a tear lately i won't just re like just associate that with light but i i do generally believe that neutral glass cannon archetypes are going to get better the better players get at neutral because you know neutral is the thing that happens the most so if players can just get to the point where they play almost perfect neutral with a neutral glass cannon and you know the other player can't really play the game because their neutral just simply isn't good enough i think we can get to that point in the game it's just going to take a, a while in this game particularly because it's more balanced i believe in other smash games neutral glass cannons were able to we were able to achieve that point sooner because it was absurdly unbalanced so you know to get to that point it wasn't it didn't take too long a uh, wolf is a character that has absurd mobility in one aspect and that's his air, air drift he has insane air drift mix-ups I will say Wolf has kind of been going down. Like I still think of Wolf very highly. I still have him in my top five. He might be falling out of it just because he doesn't have too many mix-ups of like when he's going to do his aerial. I think that's his biggest flaw. Um, I think pairing Wolf at very top level becomes uh, like there are slight timing mix-ups, but like with Fox, he has a multi-hit, and, and when you have a multi-hit, it's way harder to parry Fox and Falco when they're landing on you than Wolf. 
because Wolf only has singular hits, and you only got to worry about like a specific timing that Wolf wants to come down to and convert off of it, right? Like if he shoots the fair too early, like he's not going to really convert off of it or anything. Or like there's a there's a specific rhythm of falling fair and falling nair that are I wouldn't say obvious, but it's like around the same time. But Wolf's like gets a lot off of grab, so at least he has that mix of like okay, if you go for a parry, I grab you. But like actually pairing the the hits, he doesn't have much mix in that. But he has absurd air mobility, he has absurd hitboxes. I think his like his conversion like what moves he converts off of it's a wide variety right like you don't get a ton of damage off of one singular hit unless it's very specific on specific weights like there are crazy combos that charlie does but for the most part i think what makes wolf strong is you can like almost hit any aerial in your arsenal or get a grab or you know anything like that and like the conversion rate of his moves the percentage is very high so you you get like pretty solid conversions from almost any of his moves blaster is like absurdly good i think player you know it has been nerfed but like that move just controls a lot in neutral it's a transcendent projectile right does a lot of damage i think falco's blaster is something that was very underrated i think it almost like it, it might be better than wolf blaster in certain matchups just because of the travel speed so um you know wolf blaster is really good i think generally it's really good but i think falco blaster can be better in certain matchups like sonic i think it's better for sonic because it travels faster and what you need to do against sonic is to get him out of spin dash and then what else is about wolf i mean you have a kill throw which is really solid he has very consistent ledge trapping but I think Falco has the best ledge trapping of the three for like by far because you can die at 70 or 80 by up tilt. He has like very good things to cover normal get up to to hit stuff. So I think Falco definitely wins in that department. But Wolf has like consistent consistency ledge trap, whereas like Fox, your ledge trap is great for damage, but for a kill you usually just like take corner. But yeah, I think I think Wolf has a chance of falling off because you know I, I think some of the the he is like the slowest. Or he is slower. He has air, air air mobility, but he's slower, and he might might fall off because of the parrying thing. I think parrying going in like parry and footstool are like the things that we're seeing top players like really push forward to the point where like I don't even see much players like run up hold shield too long. It's like I I see like other top players moving towards like oh dash forward like shield flicker twice then do another option. So it's like each shield flicker is like a rep of neutral in a sense instead of holding shield. Right, holding shield is such a classic uh option when we think back to uh smash 4 you know brawl especially those two games um but in this game we're seeing like different stuff and you know we're we're finally in year three so we're, we're really seeing that stuff um unfold now going into falco i think falco's biggest lack is the mobility i don't think he has mobility in any way shape or form it's all front loaded into uh his side b which all spaces have access to. Wolf, you kind of don't use your side B for mobility. It's more of like a kill move. But Fox and Falco both use it for mobility. Fox's side or Fox's side B is way sh than Falco's though. Um, Falco sh short hop into like the first frame available side B, like that instant aerial side B, is reminds me of Smash Four Fox side B. It's very strong. It's like you can punish it on block, but you gotta be like super super ready for it so i will give it up in a sense that falco's one move that his mobility is front loaded into is extremely good if utilized correctly it lingers as well very good for catching landings so now i'm i'm definitely open for discussion on this topic because it's something that like my opinion has been changed a lot of lately i used to always put low mobility characters as like you can't be top tier if you have low mobility that's why i thought Byleth wasn't that good on release and stuff like that i but I will say as ultimate has evolved i'm like not like mobility is important and mobility has always been the most important thing for me when i look at a smash game but i feel like this game is like to the point where there there's some aspects where if you don't have mobility it's okay because there's covered by other other aspects of the game and falco is definitely like the most volatile character or volatile spacey in my opinion just because it's volatile in a different way, right? You 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 have the the conversions are the best, like clearly the best for Falco, and the crazy thing about Falco is you can start the conversions off hit or grab, right? So it's kind of like Wolf in a sense, where like Wolf's combo game is crazy because it can start with a grab, it can start with a falling aerial. Um, Falco, it can start with a I, I, at zero. I don't know how drag down, how effective drag down is, but like essentially. You know, drag down into tilt. So, like an aerial attack, a grounded attack, or just a tilt, or, you know, grab. So, Falco has a very wide variety of ways to start his sequences. His sequences hurt a lot, 
but I think the biggest thing is the lack of mobility. I will say one of the biggest pluses is like Blaster in certain matchups and his ledge trapping is like absolutely the best. It reminds me of Fox or Smash 4 Fox ledge trapping in a sense of like when you can die. Your up tilt doesn't hit below the ledge, so obviously that's not like Smash 4 Fox-esque, but you still have solid like down tilt to hit him off. Um, it can KO, it can combo into like a fair to set up a really good offstage. I think Falco also has the strongest offstage game. So like combos, ledge trap, offstage, edge guarding is like Falco dominates that by a pretty far margin. But like to me, it comes down to like, is that lack of mobility enough, right? Like when you, when you play you know, play styles like East Coast, right? Like where they're going to just camp you out and abuse the fact that you have like zero mobility. Is that going to be enough? So I, that to me, that's the big question mark because I feel like as the game progresses, I don't know if people are going to get so strong and neutral that Falco can't get those openings, right? So that's my biggest concern because when, for me, Fox is neutral is the best of all three. So like, maybe fox ends up being the best one at the end of the game i i'm not too sure like maybe fox players just get to the point where like you can't beat them in neutral and it doesn't matter that they're really light right and you can't capitalize off their mistakes and you know wolf ends up falling out because he just doesn't have enough mix absurdly big hitboxes aren't enough anymore like having absurdly big hitboxes is like the greatest thing to have year one of a game and like a really good projectile because everyone's still trying to figure out the base mechanics right everyone's bad at parrying you know and like it's a very simple strategy but we'll see uh like so 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 far my opinion is wolf's the best then fox which is like to me like bottomish of top tier and then falco's like top of high like i put falco in the category of like luigi ish where it's like okay well this character has crazy conversions but like some glaring weakness uh luigi has like the cyclone and stuff to cover it up but the off stage is like the big glaring weakness right and then like whenever he's like in a juggle situation he just doesn't have air air mobility so he's kind of just like are you cycloning are you not cycloning um, so I kind of compared to that. I know it's not like oh, it's definitely not a one to one. Those characters don't operate in the same way whatsoever. But like in terms of like strengths and weaknesses, I kind of that's how I see it. It sounds to me like you heavily value neutral and the neutral, like the neutral aspect of the game. Although Falco is good in a lot of aspects, like he has a great combo game, good ledge trapping, edge guarding. You feel like because his neutral game is lacking compared to the other two spaces. And just in general, you just don't feel like that is enough to make him a top tier character, nor is it enough to make him the best spacey. So that is Charles's argument. Let's go on to Zenyu. I can see the smile on his face. He is definitely ready. Smile. Yeah, that's a big smile. All right. So I'll meet Charles, I'll meet myself, and then we'll have Zenyu go. All right. First of all, thank you so much for having me for this debate. If you, in case you guys don't know, I'm Zenyu. I'm a SoCal Mario main. I've been playing since Smash 4. Uh, I played Smash since I was a little kid, but I first started competing in Smash 4 um, when, coincidentally, Mario was good. If I had started in Brawl, uh, it wouldn't have probably worked out for me. I played, and uh, here I am. I personally think that in terms of what you were saying, in terms of the three spaces, I personally think all three spaces are top tier. Um, I do think that this discussion comes towards what we value in Smash. I definitely think that one of the most powerful things you could have, obviously, is having mobility. Because if you have mobility, you can usually space around certain things that are dangerous, things that are usually the opponent's win condition. For example, like Sheik. I feel like she can just like dance around things like Luigi would like to do. So I feel like having that mobility is really important. I feel like Wolf has a uh, great aerial mobility. I think Fox has great ground mobility. The one thing I think that is the difference with Falco is a lot of people think of Falco as a character that is easy to keep away, but I feel like there's a lot of situations in which people don't give the amount of credit he deserves for certain parts of his neutral, especially relative to how much damage he can get out of certain situations. The example you used with Wolf, him being able to mix up his timings on, you know, like he can full jump, double jump, and basically space around if he wants to go for fair, if he wants to go for nair. Um, he has a lot of tools for that. I feel, though, that because Wolf has great horizontal mobility, a lot of people see that as the most important thing. But I feel like Falco, one thing that makes him dangerous is the fact that he has the highest jump. So when he jumps, he has so much height combined with the fact that he has multi-hits that he can land with. You have to be very respectful of how you 
engage Falco when he's trying to land. Because of his conversions out of Nair up tilt, Nair grab, there's all sorts of things he can get out of it. And I definitely agree with you in terms of his uh, ledge trapping being some of the best. I also think some of his edge guarding is some of the best as well. I think that his neutral air, the fact that it hits regardless of if you're in the front of him or in the back of him. Um, and also it sets up in tech chase at zero. So that's also really important. When he's edge guarding, it's very dangerous because the laser, I feel, puts you in a very awkward position where you can jump right away or you can delay your jump. If you delay your jump and you're right next to the stage and he goes low, some characters, I feel like he has such an easy time dropping down and nearing or dropping down and fairing or spiking. If you go high, I feel that even if certain times, it depends on the timing of your air dodge, but sometimes that even if you try to air dodge through him to get over the nair, he could still hit you regardless if you're in the front or behind him. So I think that's a tool that Falco has that a lot of people don't really see or think of as a, as a great tool. But I feel that a lot of what Falco is doing in neutral is actually extremely safe. For example, uh, I was testing this today. Falco's short up rising forward air, it would be frame 10. His forward is frame 7. So Falco's forward is also frame 7. Uh, Falco's nair is also frame 7. So his out of shield, he gets so much out of it, I feel, comparatively to Wolf's Rising Fair. I feel like Wolf's Rising Fair in some situations is good, but I feel like the conversions Falco can get out of his Rising Nair in conjunction with the hurt box shift on his landing hit. For example, like if you forward air, like for example, a character like Fa uh, Palu, and you land into her with the landing hit and she tries the Rising Nair, Falco's like on the ground still. So if she tries to rise and nair, he actually can block before she can like nair him back. Like a lot of people think that that move is like super unsafe, but in a lot of situations, because of the hurt box shifts and certain other details, it's actually kind of hard to punish Falco. Even though he doesn't have great mobility, I feel one of the things that makes him so dangerous is a combination of his up air, his walk, and his up tilt. Because there's a lot of situations, I feel, where even though he doesn't have the mobility to kind of cover as much space, his up tilt is so active and has such low lag that you could use that move as a replacement for having to move to position yourself. So I feel like a lot of times you can up tilt in place, regardless if they jump through you or they jump around you. And you could still chase them and you could still frame trap them. Even if you don't have the greatest mobility, I still feel that his hitboxes force you in situations to where he could basically get like maximum punishes off of, for example, like if you drift into him and he up tilts you a little bit, like you can somehow like get sucked into the whole move. And then it's an entire combo. And then he has drag downs at certain stages like Battlefield, like PS2. So I feel like the conversions he gets out of stray hits is very important. And I also value being able to kill. And I feel that Wolf has, Wolf and Fox do have confirms, like Nair Up Smash, and they're obviously super reliable, and they're always going to be good, in my opinion, for the meta. Like, just being, just being able to Nair into someone and cover any option, that's obviously going to be great. With Falco, I feel like he has so many things. Like, he has, he has grab combos, so up throw and down throw. Forward air drag down. He has Nair combos and up tilt. Um, his down tilt kills. I just think he has a really great toolkit. And I think a lot of people, they might see more Wolf or they might see, I think they just see more of the other spaces. And I feel that a lot of people aren't really giving some of the credit that, that Falco has in a lot of situations. But um, I definitely think it's a matter of, of what we personally value at the end of the day. Um, but I think that uh, personally, I think that Falco... And also, oh, I think the most important thing is his ease of use. I think he's the easiest out of the three spaces. For what he gets and what he can do, I feel like you don't have to put as much... I don't want to use the word effort, but you don't want to put as much... You don't have to do as much. Like with Fox, you, you have to space in a certain way. You have, to, you have to be positioned in the right way. With Falco, I feel like you can... You don't have to be as precise as being in a certain spot to punish things and get the maximum punish. Versus I feel like Wolf... I mean, he can get a lot out of grab, but like for fair, like rising fair, he gets a little bit out of rising fair, but Falco gets so much out of his rising fair. And I feel like he gets so much out of his grab compared to Wolf. So I feel like what he gets relative to his neutral is so insane compared to the other spaces. I feel like the ease of use is, is the craziest thing about Falco, in my opinion. However, I think there's a lot of ways that we'll agree and a lot of ways we'll disagree. But uh, that's just kind of my opinion about it. So basically, it sounds like to me, you somewhat disagree on the mobility 
uh, aspect of uh, that Charles was saying about Falco, be, you think because of his high his high jumps, it gives him a form of mobility that people may not be thinking about as, because he could just cover um, the higher area so much faster than other species, even though he doesn't have like the, the best horizontal mobility. Yeah, so it's that combined with his hitboxes you feel like kind of yeah. give him the uh, making it, it makes his neutral not as bad as people may think. And then on top of that, you feel as though his ability to rack up damage off of straight hits is is very key in a lot of situations. And you think that Falco is the easiest space to use overall. So with that, I'm going to unmute Charles and you guys can start the debate. Just going to say you guys can go at it. I'm going to mute myself again. And yeah, just, just keep it For simple. Sure. Okay, so I think the point you brought up with the full hop is really good. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's let's think of the mobility, right? Like what tools does Falco have to compensate for lack of mobility? Because that's like my biggest if about the character. And I also agree with you in a sense where Wolf has a very wide variety of like a conversion rate, but nothing off rising aerials, right? So when you look at Wolf- uh, you, said, uh, you said Wolf? Right, Wolf, right. So mm -hmm. like Wolf lacks rising aerials to convert, which mm -hmm. I think when, when I really think about it, I think Falco has the most broad conversion rate of all three spaces because he can convert off rising aerials. He also, he kills the earliest. He also has multi-hit drag downs are some of the most reliable things to like set up in general because it's it's essentially like base knockback you're working yeah. with right it's like okay so like if i can if i can fair drag down and down tilt you after the fair drag down if i'm falco i can do that at 50 i can do that at zero i can do that at 150 right so it's like i feel like it's kind of a meme where a sense where people are like oh wow you have a kill confirm at 150 if you're diddy kong right like you can like yeah. down back air or something but like that's not a meme that's like actually insanely right. good because a character like fox and for for example it's like yeah. at 150 you're probably not even getting a tech chase if they di the nair up right. right and you you essentially have to land the corner back here like your strategy becomes like hyper focused now don't get me wrong it's a very strong strategy right yeah. fox back airing your shield in the corner is a very fucked up stupid mm -hmm. situation and you, there's not much you can do like some of the only other characters that can like emulate that but better is like cloud back air right yeah. cloud back air on block is like a crack out fox back here on right. block and um, also uh fox having um no real confirms off a grab at high percent as well i notice like most foxes like especially when i fight against fox like once i reach over 100 percent, i'm like not jumping i'm yep. very careful when i roll um i'm shield angling so it's i'm making it as difficult as possible to get those conversions as well i definitely think people who are more familiar against fox will adopt that strategy and obviously they're doing it now, but at the same time, the, I do agree with you that having that mobility still gives him the options to deal with that situation. Like, even if he doesn't have a true punish to the shield, the fact that he has so many options and you're threatened by so many options is still what makes Fox so good. That's why I think all, all three, basically, for different reasons, are, are still top tier. But yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's really about what we personally value because i mean i think at the end of the day it's all just subjective right it's all just kind of what we perceive as what's powerful what's not i also believe that this game is a very balanced game overall just traditionally speaking just like other there's smash a lot games of characters that can do it <laughs> there's a lot of characters that can do it and use a lot of see a lot of people who like who play a couple characters a lot of top players you know they don't just stick to just one character um so it's just like I value ease of use in a game like this because there's so many characters. You wouldn't want to put so much time in a character that's not going to give you any payoff. If you, if right. you feel that I'm going to spend 10 hours a day practicing this very difficult character that I could potentially space around everyone perfectly if I know how to play that matchup perfectly. A lot of the times it's like, why don't I just pick this character that can roll in an up tilt and eventually I'll get an up tilt. Uh, I, I, that's what I kind of value. And I also feel that the universal safety of moves makes the balance very much more nuanced because I feel like I feel like in Smash 4, things were just punishable like by certain top tiers. Like Sheik, I felt like I just punched everything out of shield. And this game is not always that simple. There's, there's a lot of details that goes into uh, countering certain things. So Yeah, auto L cancel is indeed turned on in Ultimate. So, uh, <laughs> yes. You can't. You can definitely get away with swinging. I mean, at, when you think about Smash 4 top tiers, it was uh, like the characters that had 
every like everyone has that in ultimate but only certain characters had that in smash 4 right? right like like only certain characters were could do like really safe things on block and yeah. you know the game, the game revolved around run up shield so they kind of like gave it right. to everyone right right um so yeah and I, it's i my my opinion of falco has been going up like you can't ignore results right like yeah. you know larry and tilde have been doing well with the character yeah. so it's uh you know we're i think we're seeing the lack of mobility getting covered up by certain things certain aspects and it and it's it's enough to compensate because the character can like kill you at 60 or 70 with up tilt back air, right? Even with like optimal DI, like, oh, okay, like I DI in and then I DI in again just so like I get yeah. that extra distance. The character like really blows you up. And one thing that I really value, like when I, before when I looked at a tier list, I, I valued like, I tried to look at the tier list, like, okay, this character's matchup chart in general, right? Um, how good is it? And I'm starting to think like, is that valuable in this game? Because it's like this game, it's very the ease of access to pick up multiple characters. Yeah. So like, yeah. does it really matter that Wolf like yeah. kind of doesn't like lose to anyone hard? Yeah. Like Wolf, Wolf exactly. like beats some bad characters really bad, but against the top tiers, like he feels like a pretty evenish right. matchup, chart, exactly. right? Like, like for the most part, it's like okay, if if I'm just playing better than my opponent, I'm just gonna. I should right. win this like top tier matchup or what exactly. Right. And I, um, I think, I think a part of that as well is just the fact that there are so many archetypes. Cause mm-hmm. I, I was thinking about this the other day, like, I, cause I never really try to get cornered on, Oh, is that void? Hello void. Falco. Falco. Yes. Falco. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, I was going to say, um, I think what's difficult in this game is uh, the fact that there's so many archetypes because I don't really like getting cornered on the question of who I think is the best character in the game. This game is like a sea of top tiers or sea of of high tiers that is like almost almost indistinguishable and I I absolutely agree with that. It's like how many characters really have a matchup chart that's that clean? You know, you probably go do well against a variety of types of characters like if you do well against zoners but then you have to deal with like Shotos, you have to deal with the Spaceys, you have to deal with Mario, you have to deal with Swords. For you to be a character that good to run, just completely demolish that many types of archetypes, it's a very specific kind of character. So I do agree with that because I feel like at a certain level, like say, for example, like like, like Larry, like you, he plays all three spaces. So I feel like, well, how do you feel about it? Like, do you feel, Larry, that is it mostly just a comfort thing? Like, or do you do you feel that certain spaces hard counter certain characters and you'll always go that matchup? Or do you feel like... Do you feel like you're ever in a situation where, okay, I don't think this Spacey does the best, but I'll still go this Spacey? Or how's your mentality about that? Um, A lot of it comes down to just, um, it, it, it's matchups as well as uh, play styles. So if even if I feel like, you know, Falco loses a certain matchup, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play it. Like, uh, for example, when I played against Spargo and Leo at the G4 Invitational, I went Falco against Pyramithra, even though I feel like Falco loses it because I felt like the way they play would work as Falco. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that goes into it in this game. I feel like once you are a character at a certain point, if you're if you have a certain if you have certain tools that are pretty decent, you can get pretty far. I feel as right. long as you. I, I hope you know what I mean by that. Like, yeah, as, yeah. as long as you have pretty decent neutral tools, pretty decent punish game. Um, I feel like it's a matter of just preference, and there might be certain characters that get hard countered. But I feel like that amount, those amounts of matchups are very less compared to like previous games in general. Your win conditions have to be strong enough and they can't be situational, right? Like, let's think about Ganondorf's win condition and like how you, it is to beat him. Like, Gimping Ganondorf is a very common scenario. It's very yeah. like accessible like the mm. double jumps bad like you, you know what i mean like they have right. to air dodge most of the time and then like what's your win condition is again it's like we'll have to land this nair and you you kind of like look at the nair you put the mobility stats and all that other stuff and and like his double jump mix-ups and stuff like that and it's right. just like well this is all of a sudden becoming more and more situational the higher level of play i go up right, right. Fal- falco has very definite win conditions that are not situational right. like you you it's not hard to like land a an up tilt or you know like the fair is like pretty disjointed like he he has very realistic wing conditions right and i definitely agree with that one thing i want to say as well like mm. even uh matchups in general when i talk to people about matchups in this game i don't know why it feels so different from smash 4 but like if i say a matchup's even yeah. right or yeah like say i say a matchup's even they're like oh well i think my character actually loses and then my next question is always does your character lose enough to switch 
that's I think that's where I'm starting to like draw the line in terms right, of like right. I I could argue with you right now. Like we we could go into like this crazy in depth yep. like talk about the tools right. and all this crazy shit, right? But like I think it's even you think it's bad for your character, right. but like is it bad enough that you ha- do you feel like you have to warrant a switch? Exactly. But, yeah. Because I feel like most players right now at top level, this is how their lineup is like created. It's like mm-hmm. everyone has like their quote unquote main, right? So like I feel like right now Spargo has Cloud. And then yeah. like his pockets wrap around Cloud. And it's like, right. okay, well, what what do I what matchups do I not like with Cloud? Yeah. And what character can I try to make it one character that covers all these matchups that I don't like with Cloud? Yeah. Is it two? Like that's where it starts getting dicey and you're you're like triple. Right. You, and you bring it in four is like crazy, right? Yeah. Like so it's like I feel like everyone's playing this little mini game. Where they're like, okay, this is my best character. Can I cover all these bad matchups? And like, sometimes they're not even bad, or yeah. like to the public, they're not bad. But like, their matchups that just tilt you. Like, maybe exactly. you just don't personal, like this yeah. personal matchup, and like, right. you just would rather have different tools for it and stuff. And it's like a little yeah. mini game of like, can I yeah. can I get the least amount of characters to cover those matchups? And I that's what I feel like yeah. the general meta is. Like, there is still some solo mains out there, like Gluto. Right, yep. still doing a wonderful job on Wario. Um, has very high, like a uh, very high outlook of the character, which I think is fair. You know, he just doesn't have a pocket, but uh, like almost everyone else feels like they have a pocket, right? Yeah. Or like there's at least some contingency plans for some of the bad matchups. And yeah. That, so it's like for me, I like Wolf has the best matchup chart, but mm-hmm. does that mean he's the best spacey? I like that that's something I, I right now i stand by that wolf's like top five or whatever but like that's something i'm starting to doubt right like it's the whole mobility thing like i yeah. i don't know if me i'm so old and i've seen so many smash games so it's like i'm very like set in my ways like yeah mo- fast mobile characters right everything up no matter what <laughs> that is super smash brothers right yeah. like meta knight fox yeah, that's traditionally Nelly. how it's been it's just that's how, how it's it been, that's just how it be. It's usually how it is in most fighting games anyway, you know. The characters that are, you know, they have speed, they have combos, they're usually the strong characters because they pretty much just dictate the pace of the match, which right. is like the most important thing, I think. And I absolutely agree. I think the best thing there is uh what you said about is the matchup bad enough to where you have to switch? Because I think that's a good rubric because it's actionable. It's like, do I if I'm in this situation, do I feel so helpless that I'm losing because of the character I'm playing? Right. Like and if you have to you, honor, it's the exactly. So you have to actually make that decision. And and absolutely, like you could say, like for example, um, like a character like Sheik. If there was a gun to my head and someone said, "Who's the best character in the game?" I would probably say Sheik, because I think Sheik is. If I were to picture perfect gameplay, perfect I feel neutral. like yeah, I feel like Sheik just. You have the resources to take risks if you need to, with and risks. You know, (laughs) she could basically, yeah. (laughs) And you have the most importantly, you have the ability to play it safe if you need to. And I think that's very important in a game that's this explosive and this volatile. I would say a character like Sheik is very powerful, but at the same time, it's like, who would I rather fight? Like, there's so many matchups I'd rather fight. I mean, I would rather fight, not fight. Sorry, the Sheik. You know, like. Even though I have a high opinion about Sheik, the kind of player that I think of that would play Sheik at that level doesn't exist, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, the meta's not there yet. Exactly. Like, the, the Sheik players right now can't play perfect neutral, right? Exactly. So, so I think, I think yeah. yeah, I think ultimately it's a balance of how you feel that your character complements the other characters you play and basically juggling what situation you're in. Um, like, in, in response to what you said about Wolf having... Uh, overall, the best matchups out of the space is is, is is that what you're saying? Yeah, like the best matchup spread. Like in terms yeah. of like, does he lose a matchup six four? Does like yeah. like how how what and the, like obviously the more the most value is like what's his top tier matchup spread? I think he does like pretty close to even in all mm-hmm. top tier matchups like for yeah. the most part. So so yeah. like I feel like he has the most balanced matchup spread because even like his the reason why he's good is pretty simple, right? Big mm-hmm. hitboxes, great area drift. To me, Wolf is the zoner of Smash. That mm-hmm. to me, that's what it is. Because all these other zoners, like they're zoners, but they also like just want to fuck you up up close. Like for the most part, Wolf oh, always wants saying. right. Yeah. Wolf always wants you at mid range. He always wants to like have a scenario where he can safely blaster right. And 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 he just like on other zoners. He's an anti zoner because of 
like Shine, right? And his projectile being transcendent. He traditionally does well versus, or he, he traditionally forces other zoners to fight him, which is very strong. So to me, Wolf is like the the platinum zoner of this, the 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 top tier zoner, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like you could argue that maybe Pac Man has that spot because he's just like. He can also kind of shut down other zoners by like, you know, putting the hydrant down. But like Wolf's one of the top tier zoners of the game, yeah. in my opinion. The play devil's advocate, would you say that on that basis, Falco would also be a candidate for being in that category just on the basis of how active his reflector is and on the yeah. basis of his, his up close tools, which can somehow beat certain other zoners with good boxing tools? I think Falco does the best versus... He's the best anti-zoner of the species, right? Mm -hmm. His reflector comes out frame one. It's a projectile uh, reflector, right? So I I wouldn't consider him a zoner because his, his, like, the mid-range on his hitboxes aren't crazy. He doesn't have the air drift, and he doesn't have, like... His blaster just doesn't Mm -hmm. do enough damage, I guess. But... He is very, very good against other zoners because one, the reflector coming out frame one is important, right? Two, the point of reflection is actually like, depending on when he did it, it could be like four character lengths, three character lengths in front of him. So the point of reflection is closer to the source, which means it has, they have less time to shield, right? Mm -hmm. Not too sure about the multipliers, like which one's the best or whatever. But I think what's more important is like, it's riskier to throw out a projectile versus Falco than it is the other two spaces, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, Yeah. Even like ledge drop, double jump, reflector is like really good for shutting down like trap setups like snake snakes bullshit or whatever right like you're kicking a reflector yeah. like towards all the way towards roll distance right so i definitely think falco is the best anti-zoner i wouldn't consider him a zoner i think in certain matchups he can play like yeah. that and maybe the meta will evolve for two falco like blaster camping which mm-hmm. could be a thing um you know the meta is very young yeah. right so uh we Right now, Falco is like the sequence spacey at the Mm -hmm. moment, right? Even though his blaster does three, like short hop blaster is has no lag, right? Grounded blaster is a very solid projectile as long as they're like at least like a third or halfway across the stage, right? It's also really annoying to get hit by if you get hit by like three blasters in a row. It's really frustrating because it feels like you're like stopping like every single time you get hit, you know? Right, and they're like they're not even like double lasering or anything. Yeah, it's literally just pressing B. (laughs) <laughs> which is yeah. just funny to me because um, before it's like you just get camp in style right yeah. all right so um i guess just to kind of add more to the discussion i want to have both of you rank where you have each of the spaces because you guys talked about who you think is the best but you you okay. didn't really rank them i would say all three of them are lower top tier um i think falco is the most volatile and the most dangerous and I think that's what, in my opinion, that I, I think I value what Falco does. So I would say he's the best spacey. Wolf or Fox? I don't know. That's hard. I would say, I would probably say Fox and then Wolf. But wow. even then, it's like, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say because Wolf doesn't feel as like, I feel like Fox, you could position yourself well and you could frame trap well. But I feel like Wolf, I feel like they die pretty much earlier in general against Wolf. I feel like when I fight against Fox, I can take precautions to avoid dying more than Wolf. I feel like when I'm fighting against Wolf, I'm afraid of getting hit by Backer. I'm afraid of getting... Like, I feel like a lot of things will just randomly kill me against Wolf. I don't know. I, I feel like I, I'd have to really think about it between they're Wolf close. and Fox. They're yeah, they're very close. Yeah. You have a lot of experience for both characters, too, I'd imagine. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, all three, actually. But um... Yeah, I think they're all just insane, honestly. So, for me, at the moment, my... My wolf opinion has been faltering. Uh, He might fall out of my top five. I know that that's a very old school opinion. Uh, Wolf top five, right? Obviously very strong in the beginning. I still put, I still hold him to that top five. I think he just has like ultra consistency tools. I think his neutral is incredibly strong. I think Fox's is better, but like wolf having the weight to back him up. I think just in general, they did an incredible job. As much as I bitch about how light Fox is, like his neutral is very bullshit. So like, Mm -hmm. I understand that Fox has to be that light. And I understand that like illusion can't cross up on shield because because you can make a character light, but yeah. if you give them like stupid moves and disadvantage, it doesn't matter how light someone is, right? Like yeah. I 
I came to the realization that I am so trash at getting off the ledge at the first year of Ultimate because I was carried by ledge drop double jump illusion. Like I like you got off a ledge for free, or your opponent had to like respect it so much yeah. that they couldn't actually ledge trap. And I, I remember year one of Ultimate, I was just getting ledge trap. I'm like, damn, am I this trash at getting off the ledge? And it's just like, yeah, I was carried. I like I always like that yeah. option was always there, right? Yeah. So it's like I think, the weakness of having a, a tool so strong, you spam it so much, you think it's your best friend, and then yeah. the one moment. You're expecting it to work, they're reading it, and then you're dead. It's like how I sometimes will cloud down her five times in a row because I get away with it. Yeah. And then yep. on the sixth time they you know, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. And then they like blow you up for the stock, right? So, exactly. Yeah, so I, I, I definitely agree with what they did in general. Like they made Sheik extremely light. They made a lot of neutral glass cannons extremely light and yep. It makes a lot of sense for balance, right? Because you should be winning neutral most of the time. And when you do lose neutral, your opponent mm. needs that opportunity to make it hurt. Right. With that being said, I do value Fox's neutral incredibly high. I think, uh, especially now, I think players are getting to the point where, like, they can play at the speed yeah. that Fox, like, I guess, like, the cap um, speed. It's not, like, yeah. super there yet, but we're getting there. I honestly agree with you about Fox. Now that I think about it. Because I, I just think about how threatening he is, specifically about his double jump and and the threat of dash attack at every moment. Uh, he makes you roll a lot of dice. Yeah. And to me, like when I think about yeah. a how strong a character is in neutral, um, the first question that comes to mind is how much, how many situations can you force your opponent to guess, and at what distance can you do it at? Yeah. Because if if the distance is pretty far and you can do it, like if the distance is far, that means the the more situations you can force your opponent to guess, right? Like yeah. essentially right when you're in range of Fox dash attack, you're already guessing. You might yeah. not even know, but you're guessing, you know, it, like obviously it's, it's very volatile because certain one of the, of the commitment options like dash attack, like it's a, you can get hard punished as the Fox, yeah. right? So it's, it's definitely a give and take, but Fox has, I think by far the best neutral of all three spaces, but he's yeah. just the neutral ga glass cannon of the three. I think Wolf right. is, a little bit safer you can play like the traditional like i'm just going for the safe two frame i'm just going for the safe ledge right. trap right with down tilt forward tilt. you have like a very like safe uh way of winning the game through like fundamentals and stuff like that and i will say i didn't think falco was top tier but the more i've experienced it and the more i've like talked to other people about it i, I do think he's creeping up into my like top 20 which is like mm -hmm. I, what i consider top tier I, I used to think of him as like high 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 tier so it's like the 20s to 30s but i think now i could probably like comfortably put him like 15 through 20 and fox used to yeah. be 15 through 20 for me but i think as i'm seeing the uh, light just kind of evolve the character i feel like he's like being pushed more up towards that like 10 through 15 right yeah. and i think even like light has gotten extremely better at like okay you know this really sucks and i can't kill in these scenarios but you kind of just have to like rinse and repeat them right like yeah. the fo fox back air not killing is definitely a meme oh. It doesn't kill, yeah. like, or it kind of doesn't kill. But like, yeah. at the end of the day, that situation is so strong that you just land two more backers anyway, yeah. right? Yeah, I just, I just thought of something while you were talking because you brought up light, and I thought about how light plays. He's extremely good at parrying, and when he needs to, is Fox. Obviously, everybody who's seen light Fox knows is how one good of the he is. best characters out of parry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I feel it's it's uh, kind of what we were talking about before. It's like. I could rate a character like Fox very highly, but if someone knew were to come and tell me who should I play, like even if I thought Fox is the best character, I wouldn't necessarily say you should play Fox. Oh God, and again, don't, don't put someone through that pain. Exactly, don't put someone through that. Uh, but I feel that in this game, there's so many top tiers, it's a matter of finding whoever you do well with. I think a person, going back to Light, I feel like Light is someone who makes, uh, is an example of someone who makes Fox as good as he can be because of how good he is at reacting to parries. I feel like a lot of people aren't going to be as good at Light, even top players. Uh, some people are good at it, than, better than at, at it than others. I feel that Wolf is scary because he's consistent. So I do agree with that. And he can be played very consistently. He can be played very low risk, and he has moves that will just outright kill you if you space them the right way. Falco, on the other hand, I've literally played matches where I've just rolled in and got one up tilt, one good hit, and like it's 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 like I thought about it because the first time I played Larry, because I had been fighting his Wolf for so long, and I've obviously played a lot of his Fox and Smash before. I'm very familiar with what he can do, and I still have a high opinion about Fox in this game. But when I fought his Falco, there are so many situations where I was like, gee, like, I can't do shit.
about this. He hit me one time and he, he, he would like near me. I'd hit the ground, right? Okay. He grabbed me up, throw, drag down there, up, tilt, blah, 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 off stage. And it's just like, wow. Like the fact that like, obviously it's crazy that he did all that, but it's crazier out of how he gets it. Like he can get it off of just very slight or very like subtle interactions. And I think a lot of that has to do with his frame three nair and the fact that it's a multi-hit. I think that really is one of the scariest things. I feel like if you don't respect that tool against Falco, like you are almost guaranteed to lose if you're fighting someone with a decent punish game. Because I feel like you get poked once and then you're going for a ride. And unless you know how to SDI, it's hard. Like that's why I feel like, but, but this is what I was saying is like, Someone like Light can abuse the strengths of Fox because he's so his good play at style. his yeah. play style. I feel that someone else might be better with Wolf if they're that kind of player, like if they're a safe, patient player. Yeah. Um, I feel like there are certain types of players who will exceed with a character like Falco, who doesn't have to be as precise, but it's more about just uh, covering two, three things in the immediate vicinity that you can cover and then... If they get out of there, then you just kind of reset the situation. So I think ultimately it relies on one, what we value, and two, what situation it calls for to actually switch, or what situation. Like I'm sure there are certain matchups Fox shuts certain characters down. I'm sure there are certain matchups Wolf, you know, shuts certain characters down. Same with Falca. So I think it's just really dependent on value um, and uh, preference. Ultimately, really. Yeah, yeah, and. I, I feel like in Smash Four you could play Fox that safe conservative way. That right. was because he was so strong. There was a wide variety of ways you could play him, right? And exactly. like kind of shook things yeah. up with uh, coming in with Smash Stick, and everyone was like, "Oh, that's not a really good way to play Fox." But his style, and I think right. for him, of all the yeah. Foxes in Smash Four, he was the only Fox that had the style to match Ultimate Fox. Mm -hmm. And like some, a lot of people are like, oh, it's not that big of a deal to have like the perfect reactions or like just having the balls to go for like the up smash read. Like Light loves to call you out. He loves to use mm -hmm. um, Fox's broken neutral to ver condition very specific situations. Yep. He gets those call outs. He reacts very well to yep. tech chases. And like the hardest part about Fox is getting the KO. Like if you get the narrative up smash, that's hype. You got it, right? But yep. there's going to be a lot of other scenarios where you have to get the up smash call out. You mm -hmm. have to get them to swing in a certain spot to like get the shield into up smash, right? Mm -hmm. You have to, and you, you have to mask your shield really well. Yeah. When you see a Fox shield, you do not want to interact with that bubble because right. the up smash is just so crazy, yeah. right? Yep. So masking when you're going to go for that is very important. Get, landing the back air in the corner is super, super important too, right? Mm -hmm. and, and also what you said before, uh, a while ago, you said like the shield to shield where shield flickering. Right. You know, the situation where you're both and you're both shielding. Like, I feel like Fox is so good in that situation because he has such a good short up. Yeah. yeah I feel like really if, good short up. if I read someone's going to flick or shield, like, I could short up, short up bear. Like, I can do a double short up there. And basically, if they think that I'm going to do an immediate bear or whatever, like, I feel like Fox is just has that. Like, he can cover those situations well on what you just said, like the conditioning. Like, just because Fox is so on you all the time and on top of that his burst range is so good like he's making you guess and also what you just said like if he gets the kill like he's in such a good spot oh you're all so he fucked. needs yeah all he needs is that one good hit and then you have such a big deficit you know yeah and then like falco definitely has good like having a really good full hop you yeah, get to the apex of your jumps pretty quick in ultimate i think we even mentioned that when we yeah. played it from smash 4 we're like dude we're like teleporting in the air kind of thing exactly. right so so when you have a full hop to like almost disengage the situation or like just get yourself up really high falco definitely underrated in that sense as well but mm -hmm. i think i think in general my opinion of falco has gone up drastically in the past like i would even say you know three to six months it, it's always kind of been like okay maybe maybe right and then we're seeing yep. players like tilde like larry kind of come out do really well with the character in tournament we're starting to see these tournament matchups and then just even like in theory right like just right. thinking about what this character can and cannot do how seeing how effective blaster really is right and mm -hmm. just kind of seeing where falco's like place in the meta is even just like i feel like falco is future proof in a sense where like where the the meta is moving more towards like pairing and stuff like that he has very it's very hard to parry falco right and even 
I do want to say that Nair is a lot better than what I thought Nair was. I, I, I just had no idea how strong the move is. You know, hits in front, behind, frame three. When mm-hmm. Falco goes for a tomahawk, there's some situations where, like, just go for one to two hits of Nair before the grab. Like, it's yeah. almost like a why not option. Exactly. Because if they try to, like, swing or jump, like, you'll catch that. If they try to parry, they'll have to parry shield. Right. And then you get the grab anyway, right? Right. Or they shield it, and you shield pressure them into the grab. So it's right. like, when... When you when we start talking about why not options, that's very that's like top tier privilege kind of stuff, right? right? Where it's like, oh well, why wouldn't I do this? Even though there is like another option, it's like, well, this one's so good that it covers like so many other things. Right, you know? right. There's something I wanted to bring up just really quick. I thought it was interesting. While Zenyu thinks that Falco is the best spacey, he's he puts all the spaces in the lower end of top tier, whereas Charles. He has Wolf very high in his top tier. He says he thinks he's top five, or debatably top five yeah. at the point at the moment. Right. right. And then Fox, you th- you have it like top ten or something at the moment, right? Ten to fifteen for Fox, and then Falco fifteen through twenty. Yes. Okay, yeah. So I just think it's interesting because while Zenyu has like a very high opinion of Falco, I feel like your opinion of the other two spaces are just that much higher. Just just based off of well off of your guys' placements of them. On your like tier list, but I, I also feel that like I, I was just kind of like, just saying like I don't know where I would put all the spaces truly like number wise, right? Yeah, number wise, I wouldn't. I don't know, but I, I definitely think they're definitely in the tier of characters that are good enough to perform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's know, it, that it, highest it, level. It's not that I'm saying you don't think that. It's just yeah. it seems like even though you think highly of them you have like a set number of characters above them already, like just off the top of your head. I feel like it's more of like an echelon like there's a level where there's a bunch of characters in there and i feel like those characters are also there but like just because i would rate a character higher they're better in a technical sense but in a re- real sense like they're also could... really good yeah exactly. yeah you know I, I, mean? I get what you're saying i, I yeah. totally I, like like obviously you think they're really good i just thought that was interesting that, yeah. that's all i, was I just yeah, I just think this game is just so balanced. Like, I feel that... I was just thinking about it the other day. I, I, I don't know if it was Jelani, uh, Jump Steady. I was talking to him about Palu, and I think he was telling me that he hates, like, the Meta Knight matchup, and I very rarely see Meta Knights anymore in Ultimate. But I was just thinking about, like, there's so many characters that are just... They can slide under the radar. They might have, like, those one or two matchups that are pretty decent for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's it's just, like... Yeah, you could have a character that's rated highly, but I feel like in the real reality of the game, there's so many more details that goes into a win, why someone wins or why someone loses. Mm-hmm. It's not just because of the character they're playing. I mean, there's a lot of situations where I've just completely got blown up by people that I thought were playing a not good character, and they just happen to outplay me, and that's it. Okay. All right, well, um, I, I gotta I gotta head out to do a Costco run, but I okay. had a I had a really fun oh. debate. Um, thanks for bringing me on, Larry. It's always yeah. fun talking Smash with you and Zenyu, of course. Uh, of course. You know, especially, you know, we used to do this all the time at locals during Smash Four. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just talking about the game well, and all the different stuff, especially wait. like early Ultimate as well. Before you go, do you want to do a closing statement? Yeah, sure. All right. I'm so my closing guys. statement on the spaces. You know, I didn't really think too highly of falco but it has been creeping up uh obviously both of these players uh know a ton about the character so after really like talking about it and stuff i think my opinion of falco has definitely creeped up so my personal top tier is top 20 you know it's like a general mark for me so i i'll, I'll i definitely now kind of think of falco in that 15 to 20 mark right and the results don't lie as well especially with all this like theory crafting we're doing so my opinion of falco has moved up and even like my opinion of fox in general, I used to have Fox 15 through 20. Now I think of Fox like more of like a 10 through 15 ish character. Just like those neutral glass cannons kind of creeping up on my tier list as the game develops and the players develop. And I still kind of have Wolf at top five. I mean, maybe starting to go down a little bit, but I just, the consistency just feels really strong for me. And yeah, that's like, uh, I guess my closing like thoughts on all three spaces. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Basically, you know, your, your opinions rising of the characters. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll switch it over to saying you to say his closing statements. Did you guys hear anything I said or no? You don't think no, so? no, I, no, I, I, had you, I had you muted. Okay, sorry. I was saying it was a great discussion. I'm glad to be on. Uh, Charles is someone I respect a lot. He's really smart. He's very knowledgeable. I think it was cool to just bounce ideas back and forth. I mean, uh, I didn't really know what Charles felt about Falco before this. So, I mean, I just think it's good to just have a perspective and then kind of share my thoughts about that perspective. Ultimately, it's 
a subjective thing. Everybody has their opinions about what they value, what they like, what they don't like. But I definitely think that, um, at least in my opinion, all three spaces are very good. I, I value what Falco could do, but I think that uh, obviously Fox has great tools, great mobility. Wolf has great, great tools. But I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just good to have a good dis- uh, discussion about Smash Brothers, basically. So that's all I have to say. Cool, cool. Yeah. So thank you guys for coming on. I feel like compared to the last debate I had, the voice I argument was dark. I don't care. Ad hominem, ad hominem. <laughs> it was dark. You know it was dark. <laughs> Your first side argument was dark. <laughs> I don't care. That's the one. You you had good arguments for the rest. That's the one argument that, that was dark. I don't care. This was very like this. This was more of a discussion than a debate. You know. You you didn't want me to do this, did you? You were you were like second guessing me because you thought that I would be all rowdy. Like, no. gun, not gun that, like, not, not, yeah, you thought I'd be guns blazing in here. Not that you would be rowdy, but I definitely have have had debates with you, and sometimes you will like. He's just mad that I'm right. That's no, what. you'll just like pick the most like ridiculous situation. It's like, bro, this is like rarely gonna come up. No, no, no. I used a very specific situation was a Roll perfect to- counter to what you were saying, dude. But it's like the most niche. Understand. It's like the most niche situation. I'm like, okay, yes, in those circumstances, you're right. But it's like very niche circumstances. Well, there's a lot. There's definitely a lot to it. I mean, it was good having this discussion. <laughs> yeah. If you ever want to have me on again, uh, if you want me to be rowdy, I will. But obviously, we can. I think it's because I don't play Falco. I think it's because you play Falco. I think you should try him. I, 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 I've told him to play him because I feel like Falco is is similar is more similar to Smash for Fox. I think if you get like one good roll in up tilt, <laughs> everything will see. change. Yeah, everything <laughs> will change. <laughs> Something we'll shifted. See. Like, um, yeah. my but, big issue right now is I switched to Smash Stick for Fox, and if I played Falco, I'd have to. Okay. I definitely would have to play Tilt Stick. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for, tilt stick, yeah sure. for sure, yeah. for sure. Okay. <laughs> I can't be like. Roll, roll in, and then manual up till like that's yeah, really yeah, no, like, no. that. That sounds like no, no. <laughs> Wait, okay. Who I, work? I have a question. <laughs> I have a question for both of you guys as well as the chat. Who would you want me to like put on here to like you know like have a debate slash discussion like this? Like I wanted to do, I wanted to do Yanni and Izal, but it didn't. It didn't work out. But, like, damn, that I mean, sounds fire. That, that, that yeah, would be sick, actually, yeah. Uh, who would I want to see? Someone says fatality. Well, well, well. Are there any like crazy hot takes right now? Are there anybody who who believes like some some crazy like mystical uh, smash opinion? I know, I know the buzz. Did the buzz put Rob in top five? I believe so, right? Who, who, who? There was there was a top player that put. Oh wait, is all is all said might work out really. I yeah, want to see Izzo and yeah. Yanni argue about Steve. That sounds. <laughs> yeah. so hype. I'd love to see that. That sounds mm. ultra hype. Yeah, especially with all the stuff that's been going on now, Steve, it'd be interesting to see. Uh... I think a Steve discussion in general is just interesting because Steve, yeah. Steve is a Steve. very like I we have I, I just feel like we don't know anything yeah, because like know. the tech the tech and like the player skill hasn't like completely overlapped, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. yeah. I, you know, like Jake getting top A glitch was really really sick to watch, but I like I need to see like more consistency coming out from the steves but like they they still need to get those fundamentals mixed in with all the tech and right. like to, to get there and the they're, they're yeah. starting to get there they're starting to get there yeah unfortunately i unfortunately. must, I must yeah. add yeah. <laughs> unfortunately for all you players sometimes i watch steve i'm like whew, i'm on the mic though like yo this mine cart kind of cr- go crazy like, exactly <laughs> It's funny to watch people suffer, but if you're in it, it's not as uh, absolutely enjoyable. fun to watch. Kazuya, whole yeah. other thing to play against him. Absolutely. Whole other thing, yeah. Whole another story. I'm getting a good number of suggestions. I see Zomba Charlie. I think that'd be hilarious. Yeah, that'd be good. Cola versus anyone who thinks Roy's top five. Cola doesn't think Roy's that good. He 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 complains about Roy's recovery. He thinks Roy's recovery is trash. I know that Tom's for sure. Recovery. Really, <laughs> Roy? Yeah, yeah. I think Roy's recovery is actually like pretty decent. I think it's pretty above, decent, above average for sure. Yeah, no, he thinks he thinks he thinks Roy's recovery is bad. Well, it, you just have timing mix-ups. It's like yeah. definitely not the greatest recovery, but uh, there's a lot other recoveries that are worse. Charlie worse than a- who though? Charlie versus any Aegis believer. Pink, I he, where, where have you been? I I had that already. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's a uh, Charlie and Riddles. I must I must agree that I'm also on the Charlie train for yeah. for Aegis. Yeah. Or slightly overrated? Yeah, for sure. Dude, I think hey. the, the worst thing about that debate was Charlie's mic was trash. 
<laughs> it was so was bad. He, was, was he getting hype? No, he it's, it's, no, hype. his mic just sucks. Oh, <laughs> so it's like it just kept cutting out randomly. They were getting pretty hyped though. Yeah, they were actually. Pretty- yeah, no, it was it was actually getting heated. Yeah, <laughs> it was heated. If you could get Gluto to argue about Wario, that'd be hype. Oh, that would be awesome. Oh my god. You know what? I I'm try. I've been trying to schedule an interview with Gluto, so I could ask him about that as well. Dude, if you if you could get Gluto and, and Tweak, Tweak to talk yeah, about Wario, I was that thinking would be about so that. fire. Because um, Tweak has no faith. Yeah. Oh really? He's he's completely lost faith in Wario. Well, well I, he he doesn't think Wario is that good. I, I also don't think Wario is that good. So but I respect that Gluto <laughs> believes in his character. I respect yeah. that. I, so, I respect that he views the game more in, of a human aspect to like, because like you have to as Wario, right? If you think of Wario as on paper uh, through the on paper lens, like yeah. it, not a good character, <laughs> right? But like right there on. is the human aspect of like I can f- die at zero. I just think that's a great perspective to have as a player, almost like a I believe in my character and that's it. Yeah, like, yeah. I think that's just very strong, regardless if it's right or wrong. It's irrelevant, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I was trying to get Tweak and, and Jump Steady to argue about DK. Donkey Kong, that would have been funny. Because, <laughs> you know, um, Jelani thinks DK is better than Fox. No, he like legitimately <laughs> he, he legitimately believes that DK is better than Fox. Obviously, Tweak does not believe that. <laughs> in, in a way, I can understand it, but it's like... I, I can't. Fox, yeah. can, Fox can do some shit. He said, he, said he said DK's lighting options are good. Fox is one of the hardest characters to juggle in the entire game because of his fall speed. And That's true. No, no, Jelani thinks DK's landing options are good. What, Nair? <laughs> Down B, a... side B. Back air if he has established enough space. <laughs> when, you know what's crazy? When you're comparing these two characters, when you can say that Fox has the better recovery, I think that's <laughs> that's where I'm like, kind of where we're drawing the line. Like, it's like oh, <laughs> shit. Like, but yo, Fox's recovery kind of goes stupid compared to DK. <laughs> oh, and then Jelani's argument is always like, oh, DK, or Fox would be able to kill here. Oh, I mean, DK has the kill power. They both have really good dash stacks. Like, yeah. our dash stack from DK is, like, pretty cracked. It, D- yeah. You know what's messed up? If you do, like, the latest, or one of the latest hits of DK's dash attack, it's minus two on shield. Yeah. 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 It's, it's really it's, safe. It's really yeah. safe. It's, actually, it's just it's stupid. Insane. He's, like, he's doing yeah. a roll towards you. Yeah. Like, how does he have no lag after that? Like, how Auto do you can't... roll? Like, how do you roll into someone and then get up and block before they can, like, punish you? Yeah, <laughs> I see some of this stuff, and Ultimate is just like, dude, this is crazy. Like, how do, how does Diddy side B kick my shield and like I'm stuck? Yeah. Like, how? It's messed up. <laughs> Have the French Leon and American Leon debate because they're both Leon. Oh, that'd be cool. That sounds that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what they'll debate about. I, I don't know what they both believe. Yeah. <laughs> well, what what is, what do you guys think is like the hottest subject right now? Is Steve. it Rob or is it Steve? I think Steve Rob. I think are pretty hot. Subjects. I think Tyrant Method Rob? is also a very hot hot topic. Tyrant Method. Tyrant, yeah. Well, I think Wolf like being relevant or not is like pretty like yep. I wouldn't say it's like a hot discussion, but it's definitely a discussion. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been hearing a lot of people saying they think Rob is one of the best characters. So I don't know if I agree with it, but I've been hearing a lot of people say it recently. So yeah, he's too big. What is it they say <laughs> that he has the best results out of all the characters? He, like he he Roy, definitely has yeah. like insane results. Him yeah, and Roy yeah. have like crazy results. Yeah, like across yeah. across the board, like from <laughs> low to top level, they're like the the Robs have the most results or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I remember when the game first came out. I thought. Uh, I thought Roy was the most insane character ever when the when the game first dropped. Yeah, I had a high opinion about him. Yeah, infinite limit. I, cross I think Roy's like the best rushdown character or like I, mobility I, pressure character. Honestly, I think so. I think Roy is just really he's nuts. Insane. Yeah, especially his jab and his down tilt. His down tilt especially. Like, down tilt tech crazy. chase into forward smash is it's dumb. Oh gosh, yeah, so strong. Do you remember that? Uh, being like minus five or six or something stupid. Like yeah, yeah. You seen that image with Pichu getting hit by forward smash and. Peach is like a mile above Roy. I haven't seen that. Peach, oh, I see. Hit. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. versus the uh, Black Twins, right? Yeah. I think it was uh, Riddles. Riddles, yeah. yeah. I saw that. I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, for Riddles, I think, I think Roy is a very, like, matches his play style, like what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Even Light was thinking about picking up Roy. But I think I think Fox is, like, too good for Light in terms mm-hmm. of, like, what, what he like, wants to do. Yeah. All right. Well, I gotta I gotta head out, guys. But it was, sure. it was great talking to you guys. Yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it was good. Yeah. I think good good spot to end it so thank you guys for watching the debate